Hey, it's Jessica Goose here with RealAgriculture.com. Joining me right now is John Gavlowski, who's an entomologist with Manitoba Agriculture. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing quite well, thank you. We're here to talk all about bugs. Unfortunately, not beneficials, uh, but the bad guys that are coming for 2020. Now, specifically in Manitoba, uh, and with your presentation that you spoke to uh, to farmers today, there are three high priorities that you said farmers need to focus on. The first one, not kind of a shocker here, but maybe something that people don't pay too much attention to is flea beetles. Why is that? What are we going to kind of see? So yes, uh, first of all, it's flea beetles affecting canola that we're concerned about. There's actually lots of types of flea beetles, but there's a couple species that uh, have been chronic pests of canola for the past several years. Mm. Levels are high, and what compounds the problem? When you get growing conditions where it's taking a long time for those seedlings to get three or four true leaves on them, mm -hmm. that's what makes a really risky situation for canola growers. Uh, if by chance you get um, a warm, um, ideal soil moisture conditions in the spring, usually your seed treatment is all you need okay. to deal with flea beetles. But when you have high flea beetle levels combined with growing conditions that keep the plants in that seedling stage for an extended period of time, uh, that's what puts things at risk that happened last year. People were doing foliar sprays to try to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people were having to look at reseeding patches of their fields or whole fields. Yeah, because they so were wiped out. That's right. The pictures were, uh, weren't were the greatest. I remember seeing a couple of them, you know, covered on the back of a truck, right? They they were there. They were prominent. Are there certain places in Manitoba that we're going to potentially see that, that rise or that, that kind of pop-up of them in canola? It was quite widespread and certainly not every farm, but each agriculture region of the province was dealing with flea beetles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Secondly, a uh, high priority would be grass, or sorry, it would be cutworms. I kind of gave number three away, but it would be cutworms. Um, and why is this, John? So cutworms, now when we talk cutworms, we're not talking a particular species. It's a complex of species. So you've got different types of cutworms. And last year we had two species that were quite prevalent. Uh, one's called dingy cutworm. It overwinters as a partially grown larva. So mm. as soon as the crop is starting to germinate, yep. you've got these little dingy cutworms there feeding away. Uh, the other one that we saw a lot of is called redback cutworm. And it overwinters as an egg. So early on, people don't notice it much, but mm. starting about late May and through June is when it can be quite destructive. If you've got both of them happening in an area, mm -hmm. uh, it can seem like you've got this very extended cutworm season. So that was happening. Some of the farms, it was more of a complex, not just one species. Uh, and to add to that, there's another species we started to see a little bit of this year called pale western cutworm. Okay. It's a dry condition cutworm. Normally it's um, southwest Saskatchewan, uh, eastern Alberta where they have more of them. Again, they, they like to the dry can get conditions. But now it's crawling into Manitoba. We've had three dry summers in a row mm -hmm. and we were seeing some pale western last year and where that's a concern they don't come above ground much to feed like the other two cutworms. Mm. So when you have them as part of your mix, they're much harder to control with insecticides. Mm. That's That so, would be tricky for sure. Yeah, it okay. makes it difficult. And then last one here, I gave it away a little bit, but grasshoppers, that is a concern. But it's been a concern for a while, so not really a shocker here. Um, but what are we going to see as far as levels go and, and what type? So what we see will probably be dictated to some degree by the weather. Again, we've had these three dry years in a row, and uh, 2017 the levels were still low enough. There mm -hmm. wasn't a huge concern. 2018 we saw them building. 2019 we saw them building still further. So the populations have been increasing over the last couple of years mm -hmm. to the point where last year there was a fair amount of uh, edge spraying of fields and even some whole fields being sprayed for grasshoppers. And if we get another hot, dry year, that's going to favor their populations. Mm. Uh, we did get a lot of moisture in September and early October, but the grasshoppers are in the egg stage at that point, and those heavy rains probably won't have killed them off. Uh, what our map shows is that should we get good conditions, meaning a hot, dry summer again, mm -hmm. uh, we can expect there to be some areas with high grasshopper populations. So we need the growers to be out there scouting their fields starting in early June for grasshoppers. As, as early as they can. Now, would you say the flooding conditions that we're going to be seeing has a, a role in that? 
One thing to keep in mind is that early in the season, our pest species of grasshoppers are all in the egg stage. Yeah. Um, and just to show you how resilient that egg stage is, a colleague of mine took some grasshopper eggs, put them in a glass of water, let them sit for a week, hmm. poured the water out, the eggs hatched. No so way. So even, it's like it's not going to drown. They're still going to They stay. are not going to drown. No, you, you, you really can't drown grasshopper eggs. So the fields could be flooded for a week or more, and those grasshopper eggs will still survive. Now, if we get those heavy rains in early June, when, they're, when they've just hatched out and they're mm -hmm. young nymphs, that can kill them. And we've seen that in the past where okay. you get some heavy rains in early June, and it really decimates the population. But okay. heavy rains in April or May, or flooded fields from the snow and residual that moisture. That could kind of be the perfect cocktail for them, unfortunately, which which isn't good whatsoever. Yeah. Lastly here, John, uh, one thing that you wanted to mention, and you already uh, somewhat have there, the biggest kind of tip that you have for farmers for 2020 would be to scout early, scout often. Scout early, uh, scout often, exactly. Um, as soon as the crop comes up, you want to be uh, checking for flea beetles and cutworms. And even if you've got um, a, a, an insecticide seed treatment on your canola, which it all does have, it's still good to be out there looking. The cutworms can still be an issue, and it's good to be keeping an eye on just how much feeding you're getting. So start scouting early, and again, those the areas around your field, the headlands, uh, start looking for grasshoppers in early June. Okay. Well, John, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, as thank always. You.